This video is sponsored by Skillshare. It is surprisingly easy to make delicious bagels at home, and it's worth it if, like me, you live in a place where you cannot buy a decent bagel. You can make a ton at a time, freeze them, and have a homemade bagel for breakfast every morning. Let's dough. Two cups of warm water in a bowl, that's a little less than 500 mils. That much water makes a dozen bagels. And I'll summon forth the upside-down bear, dump in a tablespoon of honey. You can use sugar. The traditional thing for New York-style bagels, I think, is malted barley syrup, which you can buy online. I think honey is traditional in Montreal, the other North American bagel capital. In goes, at most, a tablespoon of dry yeast. Stir everything up and let the yeast bloom for a few minutes, mostly just to make sure it's still alive, also because yeast-blooming time-lapse shots are fun to watch. In goes salt. I'm using a tablespoon of Morton Kosher, my standard salt. Then you really want bread flour or the highest protein flour you can get. I'm going to start with five cups. That's like 650 grams, but I really believe in stirring in a baseline rough measurement and then just kneading in more by feel. Flour absorbs more or less water depending on its protein content, whether it's bleached, how exactly it's been milled, I'm sure a million other factors. If you're going to follow a recipe to the gram like a robot, you'd better hope that you're using the exact same flour as the person who wrote it used. I'd rather just use my senses, knead in flour until it feels right. Bagel dough should be dry, like enough flour kneaded in so that by the time you have it smooth and elastic, it's just barely sticky. Or some people say it shouldn't be sticky at all. That's still pretty sticky. That could be pizza dough. I'll keep kneading in more flour, and you do have to knead a lot to get chewy bagels. However, I think the insane kneading that a lot of recipes call for is more about getting you an attractive, smooth surface on the bagel. Making tasty bagels is pretty easy. Making cosmetically perfect bagels is real hard, so maybe, you know, don't. These are going to be kind of lumpy, and I don't care. That's still a little bit sticky. The drier the dough, the taller the bagel will be. The bagel on the left there I made with a dough that was not sticky at all. The bagel on the right I made with a dough that was still a little sticky. Pick your poison. In my old age, I think I'm liking thinner bagels more, perhaps because I think they're better for egg sandwiches. This is a slightly sticky dough. Back in the bowl it goes, cover it up, and check back when it's doubled in size. This took an hour with my yeast in my kitchen climate. It varies. Out she comes and divide it into 12 balls however you want. I'm rolling it out to a snake, then I'll use scissors to snip it in half, then into thirds, and then those in half again, 12 roughly equal lumps of dough. To start by rolling them all out into balls. Again, if you're concerned with cosmetics, a thing that could help is to let the balls proof for 20 or 30 minutes at this stage. The gluten kind of relaxes and then it stretches with a smoother surface, but I don't care. A couple of baking sheets dusted with flour or cornmeal or both. I'm going to pick up one of these and just pinch a hole in the center. Then you gently stretch the hole open. The hole's got to be way wider than you want it in the end, because it's going to snap back a little immediately, and the bagel is going to puff up once it cooks, which will fill in the hole even more, so start wide. Now, you could just let these proof and get a little puffy on the counter for like a half hour, or if you have the time, cover them up and jam them on top of stuff in the fridge for many hours, overnight, a whole day or two. Slow fermentation in there really does result in superior flavor, but do whatever you can. Got my oven heating here to 425 Fahrenheit or 220C convection. If you don't have a convection fan, I'd go hotter, 450. Bagels taste like bagels and not just any ring-shaped bread because they are boiled before they're baked, generally in a big, deep pot, though I'm using a skillet. I'm using it because it's my widest pan, which means I can boil more bagels at a time in it. Also, it'll come up to a boil faster. Time to re-summon the bear. Big squeeze of honey into the boiling water, or that barley syrup if you ordered some. Boiling in a slightly sweetened solution is what makes bagels shiny. It enhances browning, and you do taste it a little bit, too. When you got to a rolling boil, you just dump in your bagel. Some people do like 30 seconds a side or a minute a side. I'm doing two minutes per side. More time boiling means chewier bagels and a thicker crust. I do actually like to time it roughly with a stopwatch. There just aren't a lot of visual clues to help you judge the time. Just flip them around and boil the other side. Another two minutes. Then I use a slotted spoon to pull them out to a rack. You can just put them back on the baking sheet, but I find that letting them steam out on the rack helps to avoid soggy bottoms. Next batch goes in, and here's the downside of using a shallow pan. I felt that touch the bottom and stick a little bit. You gotta keep it moving to stop that from happening. There's gonna be water loss over the course of the boiling, so you gotta remember to keep topping your pan off with water and a little more upside down bare brains. Out comes the last batch, and there's our dozen. Time for toppings. If the bagel is still wet and sticky, you can just like dump it into a bowl of sesame seeds or whatever and smush it around, and they will stick. But they'll stick a lot better to the 
the finished bagel as you're eating it if you glue on your toppings with egg wash. Just a beaten egg loosened up with a few drops of water. Brush it on, or I think it's easier to dip the whole bagel in the bowl, and then you can just scatter on the toppings. If you dip it into the bowl of seeds, you tend to get a lot of gloppy mess from the egg dripping off. But I think the king of all bagel toppings is quote-unquote everything bagel seasoning, which has become quite popular in recent years for a good reason. It is amazing. You can buy it or you can mix it up yourself. Some pretty common proportions would be two parts coarse salt, three parts dried onion flakes, not onion powder, also three parts dried garlic flakes. The fine powders would burn in the oven. Three to four parts sesame seeds. Pretty common to use some black ones too, just for pretty. I'm only using them because I happen to have some. And then like three parts poppy seeds, and a lot of people would leave it there. Some people augment with a little caraway seed and or fennel seed. I'm doing like one part caraway. Mix that together and it's ready for the bagels. And another advantage of doing this on the racks is all of the excess can fall away. If we topped these on the pans, the excess toppings would burn in the oven and stink up the house. You could probably bake these right on the sheets, no problem, but I'm using parchment paper just in case. It makes sticking impossible. And if possible, put your plain ones on one tray and the others on another tray. Oh, don't worry about me, buddy. Get whatever you need. Nothing important happening in here. Anyway, the bagels with toppings could actually use an extra couple of minutes in the oven, so it's nice to keep them on a different tray, if possible. And these go to the oven. They'll take about 20 minutes. Halfway through, I'll rotate my pans, exchange their positions, though with my convection fan, this isn't super necessary. They bake pretty evenly regardless. They're done when they're as brown as you want them, and they feel kind of hard when you tap them. Though if you're planning to freeze most of these, you might consider under-baking them a tad, which I've done here. They'll brown a little bit more when you reheat them and toast them. When they're right out of the oven, they'll be steamy and delicious, but I suppose I'm in the camp that believes bagels are best after they've rested for a while, maybe even overnight. And when they've cooled, you can bag them and freeze them. They'll thaw in like an hour on the counter, or you can put a frozen solid bagel directly into the oven. In this case, a tabletop convection oven, more popularly known by another name that I refuse to say because I think it's stupid. Five or six minutes in there, and it's thawed and crispy. If you cut it open and it still feels a little cold on the inside, that's no big if you're planning to toast the cut sides. Say for an egg and cheese sandwich. That's one beaten egg and a nonstick. I usually just fold four sides over slightly and then flip. That square of egg fits really well on a bagel. Just a little skill I'm happy to pass on to you, as thousands of teachers on Skillshare are happy to pass on what they know. I've been checking out this new Skillshare class by Rachel and Daniel from Mango Street on product photography, basically taking flattering pictures of objects. It's a great way to start off with photography because you don't need anyone else around. You don't need any models. You can really These lighting and staging tips can help you take a better Instagram of your bagel or a thing that you're selling, whatever. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people. Film and video, animation, music production, web development, entrepreneurship. The classes are tight, usually under 60 minutes, but they pack a lot in and they give you assignments to help you apply what you've learned. There's no ads, it's unlimited, and they're always adding new stuff. Follow your curiosity. It could lead to a new hobby or a new career. It certainly did for me. And the best part, Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Insanely cheap compared to other learning venues. Do us both a favor, hit my link in the description, and the first thousand of you will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Use my link in the description. Thank you, Skillshare. Now go get some bagels in the freezer and ensure a much better breakfast for yourself over the next couple weeks.